Hi everyone, so I've just gone live across on my Facebook page, Marianne Hansen Counselling Service, to talk about this topic of what is the purpose of therapy. So if you want to watch that live stream, you can go over to my Facebook page and you'll be able to see that there. So I'm just going to do the same video here. I might make it a bit different, a bit shorter, but really it's just to explore this idea because at the moment there's a lot of conversations that are going on around what is the purpose of therapy and what how therapy should look like in the session, whether clients who pay for therapy should be able to dictate then what they talk about, even if it's not therapeutic. Um, there's loads of discussions, so whoever joins in, please feel free to share your point of view, feel free to share this with others, and I appreciate you for joining the live stream. So to me, counselling, and I've got my notes here just so that I don't kind of go off on a tangent. So counselling or a therapy room it is the client space and whether that's um, online whether that's in person it's the client space they've either been um, they've either paid for the session privately and they're coming for therapy of their own accord or it could be that they have been someone else has paid for the therapy or it could be that it's free no matter what the situation is it is still the client space they're the person that is in therapy um, and the counsellor has some like duties and responsibilities but at the same time it's a partnership between two people once you're in a fer in therapy the aim is to create a therapeutic space so that both parties so that the counsellor feels that they're creating enough warmth enough space enough um you know safety for the client to be able to talk but then also that the client feels that there's enough tr trust there so that they can open up so things that I would consider as being non-therapeutic is a situation where there's no boundaries. Now, those boundaries might be where the counsellor allows the client, the sessions to just go on and on and on. And once they've passed that 50 minute or one, that one hour, the counsellor does not do anything to put boundaries in place. Now, a client might some initially feel good about that. They might say, do you know what? I go on 20 minutes after my session, I get more time for the money I paid or you know but no one likes that feeling of not having boundaries the reason that you know it is put in a contract that says you know 50 minute session or an hour session is for both parties so boundaries are important even boundaries around things like um, distractions so a counsellor should make sure the space they're in there's no distractions you know children crying in the background noises that can distract the client but the client also around bringing their phone into the room um, or being dis um, disturbed by certain things as well so it's a two-way thing the other thing is the if the conversation for 50 percent or more of the time is not considered as therapeutic in my mind it's not therapy so it's it's individual choice to you can't just say well a client can't talk about um you know their holiday that's coming up or they can't talk about you know going to get their nails done and this sort of thing because it's part of building rapport so to a certain degree there is always going to be things within that session that maybe doesn't fit in completely with what therapy is but you're not going to just say they can't talk about anything completely but my feeling is that if a client has come for therapy, they've come for a reason and they want a therapeutic intervention. If they want just a chat or to offload, then it doesn't mean they can't do that, but they can do that with anyone. So you're not, differenti you're not differentiating between yourself and them going out for a cup of tea with their friends and talking to them. If it's just offloading about like non-counselling like type of topics, it doesn't mean that the counsellor can't do that. Um, client can't do that. What's in some cases you might actually sit with the client and say, "Do you? How do you want to use this space? And do you want to use this space just as an op opportunity to um, offload?" Now, if you're a counsellor that doesn't feel comfortable with that because you don't view that as therapy or you that's just not something you're comfortable with, then that's for you. You have to say that to your client. You know, because it's about a two-way thing. There's no point in a counsellor um, sitting there and feeling like, oh, I don't feel comfortable with this or this isn't working for me. But then they're still, you know, accepting the client's money to do the therapy. But at the same time, it's, it's a two-way thing. So how I operate is I'm quite honest. I'm honest about the way I work. I'm honest about what therapy is. Um, I don't dictate to a client. There's some clients that have, have come to see me and it will not always be that we're going deep or we're talking about feelings or we're doing therapeutic work 
And once I've got to know them to a certain point, then I'm able to supportively challenge that and to say, you know, you've been coming to see me for a while now. Um, I've noticed we haven't really touched on the things that you wanted to speak about or we haven't really explored this, A, B or C. So it is a two way thing. But if you care about your clients, then the counsellor will be quite um, confident to be able to do that without it being like a judgmental thing. Another thing is um, that's not therapeutic, really, in therapy is just a robotic um, paint by numbers way of counselling. Now that can sometimes happen either if the counsellor is new to the field or if that's just their most comfortable way of working. Some people are actually in therapy, but they, um, in, they went into the therapy profession, but maybe they don't really, it was by accident. <laughs> a few people have said that actually. Oh, during lockdown, I did a counselling course and that's how I ended up being a counsellor. Or they've not necessarily had the passion for it or they've not really seen it as being their purpose. So when they're now faced with a client in front of them, they can find it really tricky. And then they can just revert back to this is the easiest way to operate is to be very robotic. I don't need to worry about building rapport, but rapport is important. So it's non-therapeutic if you don't have that therapeutic relationship because everyone needs rapport to be when they're vulnerable. And even if you don't even, sometimes people just need rapport. If you're going into the shop to buy a, I don't know, a new phone, phone or a laptop, to me, um, I still want that um, salesperson to have a bit of a chat with me, to be friendly. So warmth and building rapport is essential, but in counselling, it's, it's, you know, without it, that's it. So another thing about therapy is if someone is instructed to go rather than them wanting to be there or they're, it's a demand, so their partner might say, if you don't have couples therapy, I'm leaving you, or their work might say, you have to go to therapy or you'll lose your job. Um, that can make a difference on the relationship. And also that comes back to what I'm talking about, which is what is the purpose of therapy? Is it a place where people have to want to be there? Or is it a place where people, if they're told to go, then they still will get a lot out of it? I'm not sure, I think I'm somewhere in between. I've worked with people who've come to see me over the years where they've been told, you know, the courts have said, we need to, I need um, to see a therapist and I need you to put it in writing that I've been to see you or other people where my wife has said I have to be here, but they clearly don't want to be in therapy. It's very tricky. It doesn't mean it can't turn around because after someone's been to three or four sessions and they see the benefits from it, they can then start to say, do you know what, I'm glad I'm here, but it does work better if someone wants to be there because you don't want to be in a therapeutic space where it is like you feel like it's a trap or you feel like it's a prison. Oh, I don't oh, I have to come here. I have to sit with this counsellor. I have to talk. I have to open up about my feelings, but I'd rather be out playing golf or whatever it is. You know, no one should be made to be anywhere they don't want to be. So these are the five things that I feel is the purpose of therapy. And what I want people to do is if you're watching this, but also if you watch on the replay, is I want you to also, if you feel like it, for you to say what you think the purpose of therapy is. And also, if some of the things I've mentioned, the five things, I'll put them in the comments. If you think, no, that's not the purpose of therapy, then you can also have a discussion with me as well. I don't mind. That's the reason I do these um, videos. It is about engaging with yourselves. And if you've got your opinions and comments, then feel free to share that. The first thing is to facilitate a safe, confidential space. That's a basic. As a counsellor, if you are taking on a client, you need to make sure you have the confidential space to do that. So when people are, some clients have come to me and they've said, my counsellor used to be, um, I could hear things in the background, I could hear um, dogs barking, I could hear this, I could hear that. Now when a client is, um, you know, I've worked with clients when it's on Zoom and they've said, excuse me, I've just got to take the dog out. And that, that's up to them because it's their space, it's their time. If they lose five minutes when they take the dog out, or if, um, you know, they've got to go and tend to the baby or whatever. I'm okay with that because they're, it's their space. They're paying for it. I'm the professional, though. If I was to say, oh, excuse me, I've just got to take the washing out. <laughs> excuse me, I've just got to deal with them. You, no, a counsellor can't do that. And there are some counsellors that they do keep having disruptions. One thing with me is I'd, I will not have disruptions during the sessions because it's about that space that you're creating. You need to, the client needs to feel they can talk about anything, but also that it's safe for them to do that. It's confidential and they need to feel respected and you're not going to feel respected if your counsellor is, you know, doing all sorts of things or if their friends are in the house or no. So it's a safe space. That is a key thing that is needed. That's the purpose. 
The second purpose is to help the client identify what the issues are. Sometimes people come to therapy and they don't know what the issue is. They don't know what, why they feel the way they feel. Now, as a counsellor, we, we have to try to help a client get to the root of it. So it could be through a series of questions. So if I'm working on the helpline in my other role or if I'm working in private practice and the client just says, over the last few weeks, I've just been feeling down, I don't know why. Or over the last six months, my confidence has shifted. We'll help the client retrace what has happened. Has anything come into your life differently over the last six months? Um, you know, are there any changes? Tell me about your current routines, your habits. Tell me about your lifestyle. And then if it comes to it and they still can't figure it out, sometimes I'll ask the question. It's a solution-focused question which says, if you did know what the answer would be or if you had to guess at what the answer would be, what would that be? So you're getting the client to think, okay, well, what might it be? What would I guess at? Why do I feel like you helping them, but you're not judging them. You're not saying, well, oh, you don't know what you are struggling with. Therefore, I can't help you. But you, to me, as a counsellor, this is my feeling. I need to know what the issue is at some point because we need to, that's what we're in therapy for. And that's what we need to work with. I can't work as a counsellor without identifying the issue. Sometimes we'll do that in an assessment which I do 15-minute free consultations if people prefer that, and that's worked really well. Sometimes we'll do it, it will take a bit of time. Let's just explore what's been going on in your life, what's been happening to you over the last six to year, um, six months to a year. Um, are there any things from childhood that you're still impacting on you now? Are there things in your relationship? We need, But to me, I think that is a key part of the therapy and the purpose is to help the client identify what the issues are. The third thing is to empower, to use interventions that empower your client to improve their situation. So this is another thing. There's short-term therapy, there's long-term therapy. There's also therapy, which is I've worked with clients that will come back uh, again and again for maybe occasional one-off sessions, but we've worked together initially for maybe a year or so. Your role as a counsellor is to use interventions that empower your client to improve their situation because if a client is coming to you uh, for a long period of time and they're still not noticing any progress or changes that are made to their situation, I'm not saying it's all down to the counsellor that you're not doing what you're supposed to do, but you, you need to reflect on that in a way because if you've been seeing a client for six months to a year and they're still in the exact same position they were before they came to therapy, then what is the purpose of them being in therapy? It doesn't mean that you're, okay, their situation will just change because they've come to see you, but you'd probably be questioning, are you empowering them enough? Are you giving them the tools or are you keeping them stuck because you're keeping them in therapy and the sessions are going brilliant they have their 50 minute session with you and they feel fantastic, you know, it's like, wow. But then they go back to their life and nothing changes. That means you're, you, you probably have to look at your interventions. Are you doing too much in the sessions but you're not giving them the tools to, to empower themselves when they're not with you? My biggest thing for me as a counsellor is I want the client to tell me when they don't need therapy anymore. I want the client to say to me, when I wasn't in therapy like that week, um, sorry, outside of therapy, I want them to say, you know, this, I tried this and this worked, or I tried this, this didn't work. And I want them to bring, come to therapy and bring back the things that have either tried, that have worked or hasn't. To me, a positive session or a client coming in, there's, sometimes my clients will come in and they'll say, do you know what, nothing's gone wrong this week. And I'll be like, yeah, that's brilliant. That's what I want. That's, you know, therapy doesn't have, it's supposed to be about getting to the root of the issues but you, as a counsellor, you want the client to be able to eventually say that I don't need therapy anymore. Therapy has helped me and now I can go off and do what I need to do. So it's about empowerment. That's how I feel. Not every counsellor feels like that. Some types of counselling methods don't believe in the idea. They believe um, that it's about they're the expert. So in CBT, they would be the expert. You'd be the patient. They would... Um, be talking to you about what you need to do in order for things to change and they would I'm not saying they would still not explore that with you but it's not necessarily about empowerment it's about saying to a client if you do a b and c then that will change your situation now that will work for some clients but it won't work for all I don't agree with that because I think therapy should be a two-way process in a sense yes I've got the expertise I've got the knowledge and I've got the interventions to use 
but you have the, it's your life. You have more power than I do as a counsellor because you're going back into your life. So I want to give you the tools to use that. So the fourth thing is to support the client to generate operations. So I'm an integrative counsellor, which means I'm trained in lots of different fields. One of them is solution focused. I love solution focused approach. I love cognitive behavioural therapy. I love person centred. And I also love psychodynamic, transactional analysis. There's so many different approaches. It's fantastic. But... The key thing is if a client is struggling with something, then your role is not to say to them, you need to do this. If you do this, if you leave your husband, then your life's going to be brilliant. If you uh, have loads of drinks of water, goes for lots of walks and do all of this, then you're going to stop being depressed. If you do, you know, it's, that's not really what therapy is about. It's about looking at the client, bring in the situation that's affecting them. You trying to figure out or helping the client to identify what are all the things in their life that are either impacting on that to make things worse or that are making things better. And then what are your options? The amount of times in solution focus, it's more direct. It's literally, okay, what are all the options you have available to you? Because what sometimes happens is people are in a state of distress. And this happens a lot more on the helplines than it does when I'm working um, with my private clients. Either way, you have someone who's in a state of distress and then they are repeating and recalling the story of what's happening. Oh, my husband um, does this and he does this and he, I'm not, this is no client story, this is just general. Um, my husband does this and he keeps doing this and if he, every time he does this, it really hurts me and he knows that this bothers me and he knows that this is the thing that he shouldn't be doing, but he still keeps doing it and I've told him that he shouldn't do it, but he still keeps doing it and I can't sleep because he keeps doing this and I can't eat because he keeps doing this, you know, or my boss at work um, is really mistreating me and they keep saying to me that I should do this and they keep... So it's the story and story that they're going round and round in. Now, they can keep talking about that story for six weeks, six months or a year in therapy. And you can listen. This is the person-centred approach. Would just listen to the client's story, nodding along, re reassuring them. But for that client, in some situations, what they want is to have someone to help to, for them to identify what are their options. Now, it doesn't mean you say, right, you could do this, 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 this or that. But you might say to your client, OK, so you've mentioned to me that your husband is doing these behaviours and your response to that is that they're affecting you and then the impact is that it's having a major impact on your mental health. OK, what are some things that you could do? So you might suggest it in that way or you might say to your client, um, OK, ideally, then if you woke up tomorrow and this situation had to be resolved or this situation was perfect, what would happen in the night? This is the miracle question. So what would happen during the night for things to get better? So for you to wake up and that's that issue to be resolved. So they then have to generate options. Okay, well, I could try, instead of telling my husband every time he does it, I could try um, doing this. Or, in, or I could maybe, we could look at going to couples counselling together. Or I might say to my husband, the impact you're having on me by doing this means that if things don't change, then we may have to spend some time apart. Or I could look at thinking about why my husband is doing this and what am I, why am I responding in the way that I am? I could change how I respond. So by the time you've generated five to ten different options with your client, they're doing most of the generating, you're just facilitating it. They're going to eventually choose one of those options and then they're going to give it a try and then maybe that doesn't work. So they come back to therapy and they say, I tried that and that didn't work. So then as a therapist, again, you explore, OK, why didn't this work? So you're going to be helping the client to think, was it that you didn't put your heart? You're not because you're not judging the client. You're working with them to try and figure this out. You know, therapy really is you're figuring it out with the client. You're side by side with them trying to get a solution. You want the best for them. So if a counsellor isn't kind of helping you to generate options, if a counsellor isn't building rapport with you, if a counsellor isn't putting, making a space, safe space as well, but also if your counsellor sometimes isn't challenging you, challenging you in a supportive way, then you, the level of progress you get might not be as much. Now, I know that, like, I'm not saying I'm, no one's perfect as a counsellor, 
But I do know that I work in a way that hopefully I feel my clients get what they need. They do give me good like testimonials about that and good reviews for that. And they do, I do have returning clients. So what I, all, all I want is the best for them. I want them to have a good session. Now, the fifth thing and the final thing is to encourage your clients to review, review and reframe their beliefs and their thoughts that are creating the unhappiness or the problem for them. So again, this idea of offloading or, just, or talking about how you feel is important to a certain degree. But if your whole counselling sessions for months and for years are just about offloading, then you will not get what you want as a client. Your counsellor will get what they want because they just have to sit there nodding, saying yes, listening and taking your money. And I'm just being honest, that's like, you know, a lot of ways that it works. Things have changed, times have evolved. If you, you know, it's about encouraging your client to review some of their thought processes, but doing it in a gentle way. So maybe, you know, things have come from their childhood, all their beliefs from childhood have been that they need to operate in a particular way. But now they're an adult, they're operating in that way and it's not working for them. Or it could be their beliefs or their mindset about men and women or about relationships have all come from their past relationships or they've all come from watching YouTube videos about how men should be, how women should be. But now when they're putting it in practice, their marriage is falling apart. So if you don't review or help the client to reframe their situation sometimes or to look at their beliefs, are these beliefs serving you? Are they, is this working for you anymore? You know, is there a belief that you could um, reframe or change or review and, and not have any more because you know then that would make your life better? So you're not doing that in a direct way like I've just said it, but that is ultimately what you're trying to do because you want the best for your client. For me, as a coach as well and a counsellor, I think that everyone has the potential to be the best that they can be. I'm not just saying that in a cheesy way. I do actually feel that. So if I know that by me possibly saying to your client, do you know what, every time you put yourself down, because I work with low self-esteem a lot of the time, every time you, you know, say something negative about yourself, every time you don't feel good enough, every time you allow another person, or not allow, every time some another person does this to you and you absorb what they're saying, or every time, how does that then impact on your life and what you want in your life? How does that then, you know, make you feel? And so what you do is you work with that. So what would it feel like if you were to say, look in the mirror every morning and say, do you know what, I've got this. And I, I, look, I look pretty good, you know, and I feel good. And I don't care what this person thinks about me. Their opinion isn't as important. It's helping your client get to that space. And as a counsellor, you have to almost think about the intervention that works for your client, not based on what you've learned in college or university. It's based on the client in front of you. One client you might use a certain method with and it approach and it will work. Another client, it's not gonna work. So that's where the building relationships comes in. With every client I work with, I have that personal relationship with them and I don't just do a one size fits all. It's like, okay, we've been working together for a period of time. I understand you now, you understand me and how I work. Let's work together and let's sort this problem out. Let's, you know, resolve it. So therapy in a nutshell is an opportunity in a space, a confidential space, where you can help clients identify what the issues are, where you use interventions that empower the client to improve their situation, where you support the client to generate options, and where you encourage the client to review and reframe the beliefs and thoughts that are creating issues in their life. There's more to it. You could probably have another 10 things. So anyone watching, you leave your comments. What do you think is the main purpose of therapy? You don't have to talk about your own experiences or to share your story, but it's just more of a general what people feel therapy is for. Thank you to everyone that joined on this live stream. I appreciate you for watching. And everyone that joins on the replay, feel free to leave your comments and check out my other channels. I've got another YouTube channel called Let's, I've got two more. One's called Let's Talk Personal Development and it's called and Marianne Living Life. I'm on TikTok. I'll put it all in the comments because, you know, by the time I read it all out. But thank you for watching and um, have a good day. Take care, everyone. Bye.